Hi everyone. Through this class, we are going to study about metal semiconductor ohmic contacts. Ohmic contacts are metal to semiconductor contacts, but in this case, they are not rectifying contacts. An ohmic contact is a low resistance junction providing conduction in both directions between metal and the semiconductor. Ideally, the current through the ohmic contact is a linear function of applied voltage and the applied voltage should be very small. Two general types of ohmic contacts are possible. First one, non-rectifying barrier and the second one is tunneling barrier. We will define a specific contact resistance that is used to characterize ohmic contacts. Next, we consider ideal non-rectifying barrier. Here, in this figure, ideal energy band diagram before contact for a metal n-type semiconductor junction is shown. Here, we can see this EF level for the metal and this EF level for the semiconductor is here. And the work function of this metal is 5M and the work function of the semiconductor is 5S. And we can see that this uh, 5M is less than this 5S. Here, this uh, EV is the top of the valence band and EC the bottom of the conduction band. And the Fermi level in the semiconductor EF, it is close to the bottom of the conduction band. And in the second diagram, the ideal energy band diagram after contact for a semiconductor metal junction is represented. Here at the left side we have metal and the right side it is semiconductor. To achieve the thermal equilibrium, electrons from this metal side, they flow into the semiconductor side. So, after this... Uh, thermal equilibrium achievement, we can see that EF on both sides, that is on metal side and semiconductor side, they are on same straight line. And here due to the flow of electrons from this metal to this semiconductor side, there will be excess electron accumulation in the semiconductor region. This excess electron charge in n-type semiconductor exist as a surface charge density. Because of electron moving from metal to semiconductor, in semiconductor there is an accumulation region. But in short key junction, we had a depletion region where electrons moved away from the semiconductor. Due to the movement of electrons from metal to semiconductor, electric field will set up and field will be in opposite direction as that of the short key junction. At thermal equilibrium, the conduction band and the valence band, they bend other way because electric field here is opposite direction as that of the short key. The junction will conduct whether you have a forward or reverse bias and conductivity is determined by the resistance of the n-type. In short key diode, it behaves like a rectifier. When metal is connected to positive terminal of the battery, then electrons in the semiconductor, they can easily move into this metal site. Here there is no barrier for electrons in the semiconductor to move into this metal site. So this is shown by this downhill from the semiconductor to this metal. But if we connect the semiconductor to the positive terminal, then electrons in this metal, they can easily move into the semiconductor side. So this is shown by this downhill in the semiconductor. So here the electrons will flow from metal to the semiconductor. When the metal is connected to positive terminal, electrons will move from semiconductor to this metal. So, in forward biasing and reverse biasing, there is electron flow. 
the ideal energy band diagram for a metal and p type semiconductor junction before contact is like this and after contact is like this here in this case 5m is greater than 5s when contact is made like this electrons from the semiconductor side can flow into metal to achieve the thermal equilibrium when they move like this they leave holes behind this uh, semiconductor region this excess concentration of holes at the surface of semiconductor makes the surface of the semiconductor more p type now electrons from the metal can readily move into this empty states in semiconductor this charge movement corresponds to holes flowing from semiconductor into metal we can also visualize holes in metal flowing into semiconductor this junction is also ohmic contact the vi characteristics of ohmic contact is shown here here we can see that the current through this uh, ohmic contact is a linear function of applied voltage next we consider the tunneling barrier we know that the width of the depletion region decreases as the doping concentration in the semiconductor increases thus the doping concentration increases the probability of tunneling through the barrier increases figure shows the energy band diagram of a heavily doped n type semiconductor to a metal junction the tunneling current jt is directly proportional to exponential minus e phi bn by e00 where phi bn is the actual short key barrier height and the e00 is given by eh cut divided by 2 into root of nd divided by epsilon s mn star where nd is the majority carrier electron concentration in n region in thermal equilibrium or doping concentration epsilon s is the permittivity of the semiconductor mn star is the effective electron mass substituting e00 in jt we can see that tunneling current increases exponentially with the doping concentration in a heavily doped semiconductor the depletion width is of the order of angstroms so tunneling may become the dominant current mechanism let us do one problem now our problem is calculate the space charge width for a short key barrier on a heavily doped silicon semiconductor at t equal to 300 kelvin doped at nd equal to 7 into 10 raised to 18 centimeter raised to minus 3 here assume that for short key barrier barrier width is 5 bn equal to 0.67 volt neglecting the barrier lowering for this case we can assume that vbi is approximately equal to 5 bo for zero applied bias space charge width is xn equal to 2 epsilon s vbi divided by end whole raised to 1 here we assumed that vbi is approximately 5 bo so vbi we can put it as 0.67 and epsilon s is equal to 11.7 into 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 14 for silicon therefore xn equal to 2 into 11.1 into 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 14 into 0.67 divided by 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 and in this case nd is 7 into 10 raised to 18 so whole raised to 1 by 2 and it is equal to 110 angstrom 